Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about eye ultrasound. The eye can be visualized very well in our transverse view. This thin layer is the cornea. Behind it is the anechoic anterior chamber. Posterior to it is the lens. It is also anechoic with a thin hyperechoic border. The vitreous chamber is the largest chamber in the eye. It is also anechoic. The innermost layer is the retina and just behind the retina is the choroid. Behind these two layers is the sclera. This hyperechoic bright layer is sclera. And finally, this hypoechoic area is the optic nerve. In a cataract, there is increased thickness of lens walls and will also be hyperechoic. Here is another case of cataract. We see a hyperechoic thick lens. This is an image of intraocular lens implant. It is hyperechoic and it will have reverberation artifacts. It will look like this. Ectopia lentis refers to dislocation of the lens. Mostly it occurs due to trauma. Here we see the lens in the posterior aspect of the vitreous chamber. This is another case of Ectopia lentis. We see the lens displaced from its original location. Vitreous hemorrhage refers to bleeding into the vitreous chamber. In the acute phase, we will see scattered, mobile, mildly hyperechoic dots and lines in the vitreous chamber. This appears because of the presence of blood, which is denser than vitreous gel. In chronic vitreous hemorrhage, we will start to see hyperechoic membranes or bands in the vitreous chamber. These bands will move around much less. They will have less mobility as compared to acute vitreous hemorrhage. In retinal detachment, the retina is separated. We will see a hyperechoic folded membrane floating in the vitreous chamber. In this image of retinal detachment, the detached retina forms a cord. This cord is only attached from one end and will move around in the vitreous chamber. A retinal detachment in which there is a hole or a tear in the retina is called regmatogenous detachment. Here is another image of a regmatogenous detachment. A tear can be seen in the retina here confirming that it is a regmatogenous detachment. A posterior vitreous detachment, also called hyaloid detachment, occurs when there is a separation between the retina and the vitreous body. It looks similar to a retinal detachment, but there is one main difference. The hyperechoic membrane will be more mobile than a retinal detachment. This membrane will move and float around really fast in the vitreous chamber. This is also a regmatogenous form of detachment. Vitreoretinal traction can occur in elderly people. The vitreous gel starts to liquefy because of degeneration. This condition is called synchysis senilis. This liquefied gel forms an anechoic lacuna. A hole can form anywhere in the thinned vitreous membrane and fluid from the lacuna goes through this hole and pulls away the vitreous membrane or hyaloid membrane from the retina. That is why it is called vitreoretinal traction because the vitreous membrane is pulled away from the retina by the fluid from the lacuna. It is also a regmatogenous form of detachment. This will also cause vitreous hemorrhage 
which appears as mixed echoes in the vitreous chamber. The hemorrhage makes the lacuna more prominent. In this image, we can see a detached hyaloid membrane with a lacuna present in the center. In proliferative vitreoretinopathy, we will see thick retinal leaves and a triangle or funnel shaped configuration is formed. This is termed the triangle sign. The detached retina will be rigid and non mobile. There is proliferation of posterior hyaloid interface and the retinal surface, which makes the retina thick, hardened, and unable to move around. This is another image of proliferative vitreoretinopathy. We see the triangle sign again with thick, non mobile retina. Sometimes we may also see transvitreal membrane at the anterior retina. Exudative retinal detachment is a non regmatogenous detachment. No retinal tear occurs in this detachment. We do not see any holes or tears in the retina. Due to inflammation or tumor, there is accumulation of subretinal fluid which separates and lifts the retina from its original location. Here is another image of an exudative retinal detachment. There is no tear present and there is accumulation of subretinal fluid. A choroidal detachment has its own specific features on ultrasound. There will be two convex shaped hyperechoic bands which will not move around and have a fixed position. This is another case of choroidal detachment. We see two hyperechoic bands in a fixed position. Sometimes a choroidal detachment is associated with hemorrhage. In this case, mixed echoes are seen within both convex shaped structures. On color Doppler, both hyperechoic bands will have blood flow because choroid is a vascular membrane. Suprachoroidal hemorrhage refers to accumulation of blood between the choroid and the sclera. In most cases, we will see multilobulated hyperechoic or heterogeneous choroid. Tractional retinal detachment usually occurs in diabetic patients. The most common cause is diabetic retinopathy. A tent shaped detachment is seen. This detachment is immobile, which means it will not move around. This is another case of tractional retinal detachment. There are two tent shaped detachments seen. These will be non mobile. In retinoscosis, the retina splits into two layers. It can be associated with a detached retina. Optic disc drusen is a condition in which a calcified hyperechoic nodule is found over optic nerve head. It is also called hyaline bodies. If the calcified nodule is large enough, it may have posterior acoustic shadowing. Persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous is a condition in which a hyperechoic band is seen extending from the optic nerve head to the posterior part of the lens. One end of this band is attached to the optic nerve head and the other end is attached to the back of the lens. Here we have another case of persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous. The hyperechoic band here is thicker than the previous one. One end is attached to the optic nerve head and the other end attaches to the posterior part of the lens. On Doppler, this hyperechoic band will show vascularity. We will see blood flow inside this band. In asteroid hyalosis, small hyperechoic mobile non shadowing structures will be seen floating in vitreous chamber. 
Choroidal melanoma is an intraocular tumor. We will see a choroidal mass with medium level echoes. When we apply color Doppler, we will find internal vascularity. Most common shape of this tumor is lenticular or biconvex shape. Choroidal melanoma can also be dome shaped. Choroidal detachment can also be seen in this image. Here is an image of choroidal melanoma with Doppler applied. We can see vascularity inside the mass. Ciliary melanoma is another intraocular tumor. The mass is found in the upper part of the image at the superior anterior aspect of vitreous chamber. This mass will also have medium level echoes. Choroidal metastasis present as choroidal thickening on ultrasound. It is usually bilateral, which means it is present in both eyes. Osseous choristoma is a tumor that occurs in young women. It can be bilateral. It is also called choroidal osteoma. A hyperechoic mass near the optic disc is seen. Optic disc is the head of optic nerve. This hyperechoic mass has posterior acoustic shadowing. Choroidal hemangioma has a non-specific appearance on ultrasound. We will see a thickened choroidal layer. Retinoblastoma is a malignancy of the retina. A hyperechoic and heterogeneous mass is present in the vitreous chamber. If it has large calcifications, posterior shadowing will be seen. Internal vascularity will be present on Doppler. Thysis bulbi, which is also called end-stage eye, is a non-functioning eye. The eye is small, deformed and filled with calcifications. It occurs after a severe eye injury. Ultrasound is helpful in visualizing ocular foreign bodies. Hard materials such as glass or metal will appear hyperechoic. Denser material will have posterior acoustic shadowing. Here is the shadowing behind the object. In a globe rupture, the interior chamber can be collapsed. Hyperechoic layering debris is present. This is the debris. There is loss of normal spherical contour of the eye. The eyeball has lost its spherical shape. Scleral buckling is seen here, deforming the eye, and the volume of the globe will be reduced. Tenon's capsule is a dense layer of connective tissue surrounding the eyeball. If there is fluid accumulation in the tenon's capsule and the optic nerve sheath, it will give a T sign. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.